All right, let's talk about some tips for being able to graph a piecewise function. So I have two different tips that I'd like to share with you for graphing piecewise function. Now, first of all, you need to know how to graph the equation. And if you struggle with graphing the equations, then the first tip is probably gonna be best for you. So that first tip is just to separate your two equations, graph them separately, and then combine them to make your piecewise graph. So what I mean by that is a, a function, a piecewise function, is just a collection of two or more equations with domain restrictions. So basically this f of x says 3x minus two, which is your equation, okay? And y equals x minus one squared plus one. But these two equations are only going to be true based on our domain restrictions. But before we get into domain restrictions, because that's usually where students kind of get confused, and that's why I like this tip. It's like, forget about the domain restrictions, forget about the multiple functions, let's just extract whatever equations I have and let's go and graph them. Now this three x minus two is something we learned from algebra one, right? So we have the y-intercept, which is down negative two, and then you follow the slope up three over one. And then we go to this one where I have, this is going to be a quadratic, we learned these in algebra two. This has a vertex of one comma one, and there's no stretch or compression. So I can go over one and then over one and graph nice there. Okay, so now that we've done all of this separately, rather than trying to do everything together, what we can do now is now go ahead and apply our domain restrictions. So this is saying this graph or this equation is only true for x values greater than one, and this one is only true for x values less than one. So now all we simply need to do is say, all right, well, x is less than one is right here, right? One is right there. So if x is greater than one, that means everything to the left of one is not gonna be a part of this graph. So I'm simply just gonna go ahead and erase it. And we could put a nice little open circle there because one is not defined. Over here, it's the exact opposite. Anything larger than one or to the right of one is not gonna be a part of the graph. And again, we're gonna use an open circle because one is going to not be included. So when you graph it separately, now all you're simply gonna do is combine them to the same graph. So we say, all right, at one comma one, they both have that point, it's undefined, to the left, we're going in a parabola, and to the right, we're doing a nice line. That's a great way to be able to do it, a great tip to be able to follow. Now, what about if you feel good with graphing and you kind of want something, a tip that's gonna make things go by a little bit faster? Well, in that case, what I like to do is take my x, y axis, and where my domain restriction is at one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line. So I graph this vertical line here. Now what this vertical line is telling me is to the right, one graph is going to be true, right? So x is greater than one, that's gonna be the equation three x minus two. And then to the left, this equation is going to be true, which is going to be an x minus one quantity squared plus one. Now again, you need to have some familiarity and confidence in your graphing abilities and to be able to do this. But all you're simply gonna do is let's start to the left. You're still gonna go through the graphing process just like you did here. So you go one, two, or sorry, down negative two, that's right. And then we're gonna go up three, so one, two, three, and then over one, right? Now we're going to the right is this one. So we're just gonna continue this. It's a open circle. So at this point, I'm gonna make an open circle and then I'm just gonna continue the process like one, two, three, another over one. So I know the graph is gonna go look like that. And then for this one, I'm gonna have x over one, up one, open circle. And then it says that x is less than one. And I know this graph is going to hit on these points. So it's gonna look something like that. So you can see these graphs are exactly the same. And I forgot to write that tip. The second tip is to use a line as a domain restriction. So it really comes down to which tip you wanna use. Do you like doing things slow so you can visually kind of see and understand the equation and their domain restriction? Or you just need some kind of reference to be able to help you understand when one equation is true compared to the other. Either way, I hope you can use either or both of these tips the next time you had to graph piecewise functions. Cheers.